Okay, we're today in London to witness one of the most impressive fantasy collections ever. Apparently, this collection is worth around 25,000 to 30,000 pounds. All right, let's get inside. Hi, James. How are you doing? Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Pleasure. Come in, come in. All right, let's go have a look. <laughs> okay, James, we're here at the very first shelf. Do you want to explain briefly about the books you have on the shelf? Okay, yeah, so just running down. I mean, this is probably all of my favorites. We've got uh, The Wheel of Time and the Dust Jackets are from a company called uh, Juniper Books. Here we have The Way of Kings, uh, all in hardcover, of course. can be quite difficult uh, to find the earlier books now. Luckily, they reprinted book one. Uh, last year, they haven't reprinted uh, Words of Radiance, so if you wanted to find this book, you're looking at about 150, 200 pounds now. One of the big ones, right in the center, we've got uh, we've got the Daddy, we've got Tolkien, um, and this set from Folio Society was a limited edition that they released uh, recently, and it sold out uh, literally in, in a couple of hours. And I was very lucky to to get one, so definitely uh, one of the centerpieces uh, of the shelf. Going down here, we've got Subterranean Press. Um, they've done just some really great work. You've probably seen some Poppy War, Murderbot Diaries on my feed a lot. They're some of my favorite covers um, for some of my favorite books. So great to have them on the shelf. And the great thing about Subterranean Press is that a lot of their books are signed, numbered. So, you know, if you can have a whole matching set, it increases the value and it just feels a bit more special and personal. Another centerpiece book uh, from Frodo Society. Again, this is Dune. This is one of the first expensive books that I bought when I spent 500 pound on a book. All right, so this is one of your other shelves. Could you just briefly explain what we're looking at here? Yeah, happily. So um, on this shelf, you will actually find some of the books that started my whole journey in uh, book collecting. We have the Harry Potter shelf up here on the left. These are actually the copies that I read as a kid. And when I was young, I hated reading, much to my mum's dismay. Um, and she heard that um, there's this, there's this new book, this Harry Potter book going around. All the kids are raving about it. You've got to read it, James. Go on. I said, no, Bob, I don't want to. <laughs> um, and she pretty much forced me to read it. And it's probably one of the things that like changed me. And it just developed a love of reading. So I know these days, Harry Potter, maybe it's... We can't talk about it so much, unfortunately. But this still holds a very important place, uh, you know, in my heart. and. It's a series that's very close to me. Another one uh, is going to be the Northern Light series. First book uh, in the His Dark Materials uh, trilogy by Philip Pullman. One of the next sort of big fantasy series that I read and it really just changed sort of my little teenage brain. It just, just completely threw me through a loop. And I still remember staying up uh, until two o'clock in the morning trying to finish the third book, not being able to sleeping for a couple of hours, waking up at five and finishing it before school. Wow. And then um, and then as I walked to school that uh, that day is just like literally crying the whole way. I don't know if you've never read it, it it's a really, really special uh, story. And uh, yeah, it's the one that I recommend almost to anyone who says, oh, what do you recommend? I always recommend Northern Lights. OK, so in terms of uh, some of these being a little bit special, we have the Book of Dust books up here. They are signed. Um, I really like their design. This one here is also signed, but what's really special is uh, these two books <laughs> I made the slipcase for myself. And uh, it's not the best workmanship. I'm yeah. okay with showing that. It's yeah, a couple of little rough edges there, but I made these myself, so I'm, I'm really proud of, uh, of this little set here. Some of the other books that you see, uh, Brent Weeks, I read uh, his Night Angel trilogy. Uh, when I was a teenager and it's just full-on badass ninja stuff and it, that hooked me so I got his next book. Some of the other signed ones that I have, we've got uh, the Bone Ships trilogy by RJ Barker. Uh, this is from Andorita Books and they are all signed and numbered. Oh, oh, this, okay, last one from this shelf I think. So I started spraying my own book edges recently and uh, this is probably one of the ones that I'm most proud of. This is uh, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Paolini. And I managed to emulate the sort of starry pattern on the edges there. And I was really surprised how well it turned out, honestly. Um, so yeah, I, I had fun making that one. And that sort of started me on this little journey 
of uh, spraying and modifying books myself. So you're spraying your own edges. You just want to briefly show us your studio. <laughs> oh, my studio. I wouldn't call it that. My my dungeon. Okay, yes, yeah, so here's my little desk in my little room. Funnily enough, it wasn't really that expensive to sort of get going. Like, I got a little starter kit, which comes with the compressor. It came with an airbrush. I got some, uh, a set of paints. I mean, probably all together, it's only about a hundred pounds. So I noticed you have lots of books in here that haven't been sprayed yet. <laughs> if any of the viewers are interested in getting any of their books sprayed, or maybe ordering some of these books, how can they contact you? Best way to do it would be on Instagram, uh, uh, find me at Fantasy File and uh, yeah, just send me a message. Always happy to either find the book myself and then spray it or I've had some followers send their own books to me and then I spray them and send them back. So yeah, happy to make anything work really. So here we have the folio shelf, a few sort of uh, extras at the top. You can tell that Northern Lights was a big uh, series because I've got more over here. The Aragon series was also really fun when I was a bit younger uh, upon a reread. As I'm a bit older, like you can sort of notice some of the sort of weaknesses of it, but still a really great series. Adrian Tchaikovsky, really, really good stuff here. Children of Time and Ruin. Here is a very important series to me. It's the Chronicles of Narnia. I'm trying to make a wardrobe. My woodworking skills aren't very good. Got some folios here, here, all along this shelf. One of my favorites. Would you like to hold the microphone? Of course. Thank you is this edition of Dune. I mean, just the cover is so striking. Just everything about it, the, the art, I think it's one of Folio Society's best uh, editions just from a design standpoint. Also, ah, Robin Hobb. Ooh, he's so heavy. Again, a really great uh, set from Folio Society. Really sturdy slipcase, great design. Before we move on from Robin Hobb, uh, there are these anniversary editions that I get asked about quite a lot. These are from Harper Voyager and they're really hard to come by now. Trying to find these took me two years to find. Again, if you were able to get these for like 20, 30 pounds when they came out, great. Now you're looking at 200, 300 pounds for each book. <laughs> So very hard to get hold of. If you have ever seen one of these, um, you know, don't let it go. So here we have a, an edition of Dracula with a very velvety uh, finish to the front. What's really cool is actually there is some uh, glow-in-the-dark ink uh, on all the illustrations. These bats glow in the dark. I mean, just the vibe is, is fantastic. The illustrations also have some glow-in-the-dark ink, so I don't know how you'd read it in the dark, but you could appreciate the art in the dark still. So, Amaranthine Books, they go all out on the uh, on the thematic, sort of, an artistic expression, yeah. uh, which is why they're one of my favorite publishers. Going on to the folios, we've got the Folio Society editions of Small Gods and Mort by Terry Pratchett. These are really hard to find now. Again, if you could have bought these from Folio Society for £40 back in the day, you'd be laughing because now you're looking at £250 minimum to try and get either of these. So I feel very lucky that I found these uh, a long time ago when they were much cheaper. Okay, then going on uh, towards the bottom, we have got almost the whole collection of the James Bond books. Um, admittedly, I do enjoy the movies more than the books themselves. But the Game of Thrones books here. I'll get to the folio ones, but I guess these are worth uh, an honourable mention. They are a leather-bound, leather slipcase. Again, this is from Harper Voyager. And, I mean, just look at that. The embossing, the foiling. These are fantastic as well. But, funnily enough, they're not my favourite reading copies. The best editions of Game of Thrones, in my opinion, uh, is actually the, the Folio Society ones. Have you seen these in person yet? Not in person, no. I've seen them online. Oh man, I'll, I'll let you touch them later. <laughs> my favourite out of the set uh, is probably the, the first book because it comes with this map. Mm. And I love maps. I mean, it's just, look at that, it's just stunning. And now I have to fold it and that makes me sad, but I'll look at it for a bit longer. Yeah, I mean, just the designs that they choose, the, the foiling, I mean, it's just fantastic. Uh, the art that they have, just these editions are, are just so, so, so good. Every chapter has uh, an illustration, which is unique to each character. So each chapter normally has a particular character that heads that chapter. Oh, look, there's their interpretation of the Iron Throne. How much are these? So you can get these from Folio Society still. They have increased their prices recently, but I think they're 165 pounds. Here's another sort of edition of the, uh, the, the Iron Throne. I tried to sit on it, it's a bit small. 
So James, this is without a doubt the most impressive fantasy collection I have ever, ever seen. Thank you so much for allowing us to see your books. Pleasure. I can talk about books all day, as I'm sure you're aware. So it's been really great having you in. Thank you so much. Fantastic. See you guys in the next video. And I just want to say a special thanks to my patrons who support what I do here. It means the world to me. Thank you so much.